Anyways, what's more glam and gore than a creepy doll? I know there's already a ton of tutorials for broken dolls, but everyone I saw was how to be a doll 2D face paint style. So I wanted to teach you how to do this popular costume 3D FX style, and it's still easy enough for most people to do. Let's get cracking. To start, you'll want someone's head. Either your own in the form of a life cast, or just as good, you can use a styrofoam or plastic mannequin head you find at beauty supply stores. Next, you'll need some kind of clay. I'm using Chavant Medium Sulfur-Free Plastiline, which is an oil-based clay that doesn't dry, meaning it's always in the same sort of state, which is perfect for sculpting prosthetics, but you can use any other type of clay that you have, whether that's water-based clay or air-drying clay, just so long as it is firm enough to hold some shapes and basic details. I'll do a video on beginner sculpting tips if you zombies are interested, but for this video I'll keep it simple because the sculpt is actually very simple too. Slap a bunch of clay over your work face. Hehe, <laughs> get it? Like workspace, but face, cause yeah. So anyway, I basically like to lay a lot of clay in the basic shape I know I'm going for, which in this case is a chubby little doll face. Putting down the larger amount than I know I'll need, and then I start refining it, shaving it down, and shaping it with basic sculpting tools. And I'm talking basic sculpting tools. These are from the littlest sort of beginner packs that I found at Michael's for something like $5 for several different tools. Nothing fancy here. Shave, shape, shave, shape, shave, shape, repeat until you're seeing a baby face. Use pictures of dolls for reference if that helps. You can either do just the cheeks and chin if you don't feel like wearing a full face, or you can keep going and build up a little on the forehead and bridge at the nose to create that round doll eye frame. When you're done with your basic shape, an easy way to clean off all those little pieces of stray clay and get a smooth surface is to wipe it down with some isopropyl mirror state. Not vital if you don't have it, but if you do, it'll save you some time. Okay, so, to the Kraken. No, not that one. We pretty much just want to carve some shattered type patterns into the clay. I took lots of inspo from this gorgeous work, which was really hard to find the artist's name online, but I believe it is the work of Ashley Forshaw. I didn't want to color or style mine the same, but I loved her choice and placement of the cracks so, so, so much, so I decided to mimic two of the same breaks that she used. You can also Google image search words like broken glass, shattered mirror, etc., and mimic those cracks for your sculpt if you need to. Now to turn this sculpt into a prosthetic. We're doing it the easy way for all skill levels, which is to just layer liquid latex, which you can find at any Halloween store, several times on top of our sculpt. But the ideal way would have been to make a negative mold of our sculpt so that we could fill it with latex or another FX material to bring out every fine detail and give us a perfect fit to our face. Since we're not doing that and we're doing the latex layers instead, it means small details in our cracks will be lost. I wasn't sure how thin of lines I could get away with at the time of sculpting, but, just so you know, most of these shallow skinny lines you see here won't get picked up through the layers of latex. Only the wider, deeper lines will show through, and only if you're careful enough to let the latex sink into them and not just bridge the gap over them. Wait for the latex to turn clear or dry before adding the next layer in that spot, and apply somewhere between 5-10 to 10 coats to ensure the prosthetic is thick enough to keep its shape once it's peeled off. It'll take a couple hours to completely dry, but when it does, powder over the whole thing, then slowly and gently pull up one corner, peeling it off around the outside, working in towards the nose. Be extra careful peeling by the cracks, and use a little bit of powder on a brush to remove the stickiness of the latex underneath. So poison a lip of to peel mine off before painting, just in case it rips while I'm peeling. I mean, I'd rather know that before I spend the time painting it. So, when it's off, I set it back down on my sculpt. Since it's hollow, it's important to paint it while it has a firm backing to push on. I took my lightest foundation and applied it just like it were my face, and then I used diluted brown and black alcohol-activated paints to sink into the cracks. I also painted on tiny little doll lips, used a little contour around the cheeks to really emphasize their cheekiness, and used a bit of red and pink alcohol-activated colors to apply some blotchy blush. Last but not least for the prep work, glue or tape cotton into the biggest bulges of your prosthetics, which would be the cheeks and the chin. This way you won't accidentally indent them after it's glued on your face, cause if you do that, you're pretty much fluffed. Okay, hello, here I am with my normal human face, doll dress, creepy contacts, and wig. Application will be fast since all the big work is already out of the way. First thing you want to do is apply white all over your eye bag area. This will help sell the round, large doll eyes under the prosthetic. Next, I'm doing very small basic eyeliner, just enough that when I add my lashes later, the thick band is camouflaged. Add mascara, then I suggest you wait to add lashes. The eye openings in the prosthetic are likely too round and not wide enough to fit your normal lashes, and if that's the case, it would be much easier to apply the lashes after your prosthetic. To glue on the prosthetic, all you'll need is an FX adhesive. You'll likely find Spiricum, the easiest since it's carried in most Halloween stores, but you can also use Prosade if you have that. That's what I'm using today, but either would work just fine. I'm applying the adhesive just on the inside perimeter of the lower half of the prosthetic, right below the lower lip, and between the upper lip and nose. I add glue to those last two areas because I know that having those parts in contact with my face will let me move my mouth and have the prosthetic move with it. For extra hold, I'm also applying adhesive to those same mouth areas on my actual face. 
Whether you're using Spiricum or Prosade, you want to wait for a minute or two before sitting the prosthetic onto your face. If you're using Spiricum, touch it after a minute to test if it's tacky. If it is, it's ready. If you're using Prosade, you'll know it's ready when it's turned mostly or completely clear. Then just line it up with your features on the lower half of your face and press it on. Then glue the rest on by applying adhesive where the top half will sit. Another downside to doing the latex layers as opposed to the full molding process is that it's difficult to get really smooth blended edges, but you can do a couple things to hide them. You can stipple some more liquid latex slightly onto the edges of your prosthetic and pass the edge onto your actual face all the way around. This is the same thing that you do to help blend a bald cap. Only tough thing with this look is if you're doing it on yourself, it's kind of hard to see the sides of your face, but do what you can or get a friend to help. While that latex is drying, I glued lower lashes onto the bottom ends of my doll eye holes, trimmed my upper lashes to fit within the same doll eye holes, and then glued those upper lashes on. When the latex is dry, apply that same foundation you used on your prosthetic onto the edges. I ran out of mine right before this step, so mine isn't an exact match, which unfortunately was something I couldn't see until looking at the footage after, but hey, what can you do? Lastly, I realized I forgot to give my dual face some eyebrows, so I drew those on and I changed the color of my lips to be a bit pinker. Creepy doll complete. Also, this collab was a long time coming. Please be sure to check out one of my best and most spooky of friends, Rob Dyke. When he's not busy turning inanimate objects into possessed baby faces, he's talking about some of the most gruesome and funny things over on his YouTube channel. Click here or find his channel link in the description below. And if you're new here, be a doll and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I just, I just cracked myself up, literally. Uh, okay, bye. There's nothing weird looking about this. <laughs> Escapee! Catch her! <sighs> this is how you make Ripley stand still instantly. You just put a hat on her. Frozen. She doesn't understand the concept of walking and wearing a hat at the same time. Okay, no more hat. Now move, see? It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> There is one thing I forgot to do, and that was to take out my nose ring before putting this on my face. That's a spirit. <laughs> it's on my butt, but I have this weight to do that. Ripley! Omega, it's your head. You see this? Bay's not paying attention to you. Happy Halloween!